Hey, what's up guys? It's me again, Hunter. And I finally was able to borrow a camera from my friend and I wanted to take a few minutes to show you guys how little equipment I actually use when I go shooting. I have more equipment than I'm about to show, but this is the equipment with which I have actually earned my money in stock photography almost exclusively. I can't imagine any other pieces of equipment that I've really used, which for example, might be my flashes to earn money in stock photography, but I'm going to separate my regular photography from object photography which I do with my flashes, which is set up to my right that I've been doing since the, break, since the summer break has started. I'm going to show you my camera last, but I will just casually show you a few of the things that I use. This really isn't that important, but I use it sometimes. I kind of think it makes photography too easy because with a 70 to 300 telephoto lens, as you can see here, it's a little, too easy to get close-ups of objects from really far away. But it does make wildlife photography really fun and practical, and, and that's pretty much it. It's just a Tamron 70 to 300, 4.5 to 5.6, I think. Four to 5.6, yeah, that's, that's the lens. And that's one of the lenses. These three things are gonna go in combination with the tripod that I'm gonna show you in a second. But this is actually a bracket mount for perfect panoramic images because if you are not already aware, you need to find the nodal point of your camera setup, including the body and lens, in order to prevent any sort of parallax differentiation between the, the individual shots of a panorama. And Maybe I can explain how to shoot a perfect panorama later, but if you don't understand that stuff, just understand that this stuff is for taking perfect panoramas. And I don't actually use it that much, but when I am traveling somewhere and I really want to have a, a, just a, a beautiful picture for myself and not necessarily for stock photography, I use this panorama bracket on top of my tripod. This is the most amazing deal of a tripod that I have ever seen, and the top has fallen off. Uh, this tripod cost me, I think, 50 euro. Uh, Chinese made, and you think the quality is bad, but it is absolutely not. It's a newer, I forget the serial number tripod, I'll put the serial number in the video, but it has a ball head, uh, 360 swivel, you can hang weights on it to make it heavier. It gets pretty tall. You can actually unscrew the legs and screw one back in and turn it into a monopod. Uh, it's just very versatile, lightweight, high quality metal tripod that is much better than the tripods that you would normally see where maybe you have this little wind up car windshield mechanism to increase the height of your tripod. Those are cheap tripods and they can't stand the wind, they can't stand moving. You really need a decent tripod if you wanna take any, any sort of photography really, or videos. Uh, unfortunately, I can't use the tripod while I'm making this video because I wanna introduce the tripod, but that's my tripod. The things that come last in my backpack, and oftentimes I don't actually even use a backpack, I use this bag here which is just the standard tripod bag that the tripod came with. And I can actually fit all of these small knickknacks in there with the tripod and I can just wear it and it's very convenient. But here I have, as you can see, three more batteries. Uh, I have four batteries in total, another SD card. The other SD card is actually plugged into my computer. I have two 32 gigabyte SD cards. I do have two chargers for those, for those batteries. And one of the chargers actually works on mini USB and I have a battery backup bank that I plug into that charger and I can actually charge batteries on the fly, which is pretty useful. This, this is Natasha. This is my camera, which I love so much and I have been everywhere with and nobody knows more about me than this camera. And 
I love this camera. This exact setup is basically my money generator. I have made almost all of my photos for stock photography using just this stuff. We have the body of the camera is a Nikon D5000, 5200, 5200, wherever you say it. And I know that it's not professional grade. I would say it's sort of middle grade. It still has the automatic modes for portraits and scenery, but I always use manual mode, of course. I know my way around the camera really well. This, uh, this, this lens right here was actually an emergency purchase because I, I destroyed my first lens by sledding with it down a mountain. And I, as you can imagine, it slammed into a lot of things. And by the time we got to the bottom of the mountain, it was broken. This right here is probably even more useful than my real tripod. It is a Manfrotto pocket tripod. Uh, I, can't, I don't know if it's in focus or not. This cost me maybe uh, 15 euros, something like that, this tiny little piece. And as you can see, it, it has legs that fold out and allow you to get different perspectives on the go. And it just stays on your camera and it stays out of the way and very, very useful. This, this package itself is just powerful in itself. I, I really love this package. Uh, as you can see, I decorated my lens hood with my name and stuff just because I was bored one night. But this is the, this is the setup to which I owe the bulk of my work. Most of the things that I was showing were just accessories, but this is truly what I walk around with every day. Whenever I go somewhere, I just take this with me. And to be honest, my, my next goal in photography equipment is to find a camera that's more subtle than this. Uh, I'm thinking sort of in the direction of a point and shoot, but maybe not so weak as a point and shoot, maybe some sort of system camera, system camera. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what that's called in English either. But yeah, I, I, I love this camera. And this actually used to be a neck strap, a custom neck strap that I bought but I found that I can just use this small neck strap attachment to wear around my knuckles and I can just carry my camera like this for miles, for, for, for hours and hours of walking and I, and I do indeed do that. I just think to have the camera on my hand at all times like this ready to go is the most convenient and allows me to shoot whenever I see anything that captures my eye. Uh, and that's that, that's pretty much it. That's the that's the equipment that I use, and I know it's not a lot. And I've seen a lot of other photography bloggers introduce their equipment in their bags, and I would definitely not consider myself of consistent wedding photographer caliber. That I need two bodies to walk around with. That I need any any sort of bag that weighs me down because the whole goal in my collection of active photography equipment is just to have stuff, have stuff that I can walk around with and still be a normal person. I don't want to, I, I don't want to be that equipment guy or, you know, it, it's just, it's practical. And my stock photography style is more about capturing life than it is life and architecture, than it is being somehow overly professional, if that makes sense. And yeah, all of this equipment together, even though it may cost, who knows, 800 euros together, perhaps, over, over two years, um, over the last year, it has earned me on stock photography websites around $2,000, maybe a little bit more than that. And that's a pretty significant return on investment. And that's pretty much it. If you like this video and you are considering joining the Stock Photography Force to support all of us, myself and yourself, you can consider using my referrals during your registration at whatever stock platform you decide to use, Shutterstock. And I hope you have a wonderful time shooting stock.